Canelo Alvarez versus Edgar Belanga versus the UFC. What's going on? Welcome back to Calf Kick Sports. I'm joined by my Ray. Ray, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right, man. New trim, feeling a bit fresh. So yeah, what about yourself? How are you keeping? Uh, it's been busy. I'm gonna say that it's been busy. It's been a yeah, busy. Yeah, It's been a busy summer. But yeah, let's go straight into this. This is Mexican Independence Day. It's Canelo Alvarez's weekend. Just quickly on the fight we talk, before we talk about the main topic. Eddie Eddie has managed to get his man into the big payday. Like, just talk to me about what potentially Valanga can do. Because this is the thing. Eddie then talks about his starting 13, 14 fights with first round knockouts. And then afterwards, he kind of doesn't mention anything. Because it just looks like Belanga's momentum just faded afterwards. Like, realistically, is there anything he can do against Canelo? This is a cash-out, and Eddie Hearn saw with Belanga, with him being Puerto Rican, there's a market there to cash out. That's all it is. Because when Belanga got released from top rank, everyone knew he had a ceiling. Eddie Hearn probably just saw, do you know what? I can use him in the Canelo sweepstakes. He's Puerto Rican. They've got a famous crowd. Even though he hasn't got the following of like a Phoenix Trinidad or Miguel Cotto, there's still like a history of Mexico first Puerto Rico. Eddie Hearn probably just said, this is a good money grab. He probably doesn't care about Belanga that much. And this way it is way it is. Like, it's just, this is like a purely just business fight. And for Canelo, he's in that weird space where you can't just keep on fighting fights where no one cares about your opponents. Especially with the price of pay-per-views in America. You can't keep on just thinking, oh yeah, the Mexican independence, my fans. Oh, don't get me wrong, there's going to be a strong amount of Mexican fans that are watching regardless. But I mean, in terms of like breaking a certain number, I don't think there's no pay-per-view right now that's going to break certain numbers at the moment. You state, state side, state side. Yeah, I was going to say, you said about Canelo and stuff. Is it kind of in a position where he's damned if he does, damned if he doesn't in terms of fighting? You know he, like he needs to fight. Let's stop this. He needs to, for the for the public interest, we're not talking about, whether you want to talk about Canelo's ability and whether he's, you know, however you feel that he'll perform, whether he's past his prime or not. Public interest-wise, Benavides is the fight to make. And I think now... Even though you try to argue this way another year before, now I believe the public have basically said about Canelo, we do not care about anybody else but Benavides. Benavides has now brought himself to a place where he is the biggest draw in his division. Whether you feel like physical-wise, he will pose a problem to Canelo or not, everyone's interested in that fight. So Canelo versus Belanga is like, it's another contractual fight. If we call it's it a state, I'm okay yeah. with that. I'm okay yeah. with it. But I've always said, Canelo Alvarez in the twilight of his I am happy for him being active compared to other fighters who are doing the one year thing. I'm happy that. I, he's I still don't mind. Him I just need him to drop all the other bills. There's no need for you to. At, at this point, where he is in his career, especially for me, I don't think that him being undisputed helps him any much more. In regards well, to he's not with the speed now. He's unified because he dropped the IBF. Oh, is that officially? Yeah, yeah. but he, that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. That's why I don't understand why. If I'm Canelo, just keep hold on to the WBC and hold on to the ring lineal super middleweight belt. Other than that, it's the same as like we talked about before, the Mayweather model. Mayweather would win a belt and then he'll just drop it. Especially if it was on WBC, Mayweather was just like WBA won that. As soon as he wins it, Bam, like, let go of it. There's no need for me to hold it. And that's how I feel like Canelo just needs to, if you want to go down the route that you're going down, you're Canelo, your name is bigger than the belts at this point. Especially in the spiral of your career. My only thing is with Belanga, who else is next for Canelo to face that people are going to be interested in? I think it will be better read this person. I do think that, but for the belts, the only thing I would say is the optics look nice in the ring walk, the post-fight picture with the belts. There is him holding on to me. That's the only thing I can say. I, 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 I get it, but do you know what it is as well, though? That optics looks nice going into, like, when he faced John Ryder in, you know, mm-hmm. Guadalajara. When he done that, it looked nice. When he done it first, Charlo, because it was obviously the vision to get the vision, it looked nice. Now, by the Munguia fight, it's kind of just like, you're Canelo. 
and that's a good place to be. And he's like him. I only think him. There's three people that's in that space. Him and Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua, where it's just like your name is bigger than belts. I think the, the difference is with AJ is that he still obviously wants to get undisputed status, but he's still at that point where look, look what he's just done. He's just done Wembley to a record attendance again, and he he's not the belt holder. And I feel like with Canelo is like you your shine, your law is so big that you don't need to worry about having bare belts in the ring no more. You are Canelo. That's it. The fact that we still call you Canelo and not Saul Alvarez says it all. You're Canelo. But no, I, I hear it. I hear what you mean. Let's go into it, though. UFC versus Canelo Alvarez. <sighs> Is, are the UFC making a mistake? Are they going too ballsy? Are they going too risky to take one? For me, not just the greatest Mexican of all time, the greatest boxer of our own time, on his weekend, on his day, are they going too risky? This, 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 is, this, is, this is where it's funny, because as much as I was just talking about people aren't caring as much as Canelo about his opponent. He's still, like I said, he is still Canelo. And the fact that UFC wanted to go head to head with Canelo, because I think what UFC saw was, this is Canelo against a not so known opponent. He's he's weak right now. Let's try and bring up one of our big stars in Sean O'Malley, who... He's a Mex-American. He's a, one that I, <laughs> I can't stand that. But it was funny. You know what? Coming from him himself, that was funny. I like that. But <laughs> I don't know what to call it. O'Malley. He's a, no, he's a star. He is a star. He's not a superstar. And I feel like what the UFC sometimes think O'Malley is, isn't what he is. He's the next generation star where it's like he is big on streaming. He's big on like internet presence, social media presence. Yeah, I was going to say... That doesn't comes... always equate to real life. Like, Canelo is a superstar. Like, off social media, he is a superstar. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. People are buying pay-per-views, whereas Amali comes from that... Gen- he appeals to a generation where they're like, yo, they are streaming this illegally. They're not paying money to have, you know... They're not paying money to have, like, pay-per-view parties where they're going to gather their friends and be like, yo... We have to watch this fight. They're on their laptop saying, I'm going to find a link to stream this fight. That's who O'Malley appeals to. But then the vanity metrics makes it seem that he's a bigger star than he is. He's got this outlandish look about him. Nothing. He's got the crazy hair, the tattoos and everything. And at the end of the day, he's also exciting. Like Sean yeah, O'Malley, sure. as a fighter, is very exciting yeah. in, terms of what, in terms of the North Hassan's. So I get it. They have done it, if I'm not wrong, once before. I might be wrong where... And they Canelo made Canelo actually, had to wait, to wait for that. I don't think this is going to happen this time, though, because of the day it is. Masvidal versus Diaz. Okay. Okay, that okay. makes sense. I, yeah. Masvidal versus Diaz, and let's see who else was on the card. Because I think there's another big thing when it comes to the reason why the UFC going up against Canelo didn't work. And I believe it's the strength of the whole card is in the greatest. Whereas UFC 244, main event, Masvidal first Nate Diaz, at a time that Masvidal was red hot after uh, the, you know, the Ben Askren fight. And then obviously Nate Diaz is Nate Diaz. Nate, then yeah. you had Kelvin Gastelum against Darren Till, where, yeah, Kelvin, they're, they're, they're big, it's, it's big names. Then you have Stevens, run the boy Thompson against Vicente Luque, decent fight. Derek Lewis fought, so... You know, people are going to... People tune in, tune in so. for him anyway, yeah. Come on, people are going to tune in. And then it was Kevin Lee versus Gregor Gillespie. And at that time, if I remember, that was Kevin Lee on the comeback and he got the big head kick KO. Now, if we look at UFC Notches card... I, I will be honest, outside of the final, the three fights on the back end of the card it's not anything that's what, that's what, and even even the Valentina and Grasso I was going to say even the core main just because it's a title fight is the reason why it's slotted in I believe they, they've they've because this is their third fight and I'm kind of like they didn't let's be let's call it spade a spade and everyone's complaining about the the UFC doesn't promote like it used to because mm. you've got Sean O'Malley first Marab uh, the, uh, the Valish Philly that's my guy I'm always going to root for Marab so that's a good fight then you got Grass against Shevchenko, which I feel like they've done very little to garner excitement for that. Yes, they were on tough, but ain't no one watched that, that like that, that no more. 
Then you've got Brian Ortega versus Diego Lopez, which is a sleeper fight that could be great. Then the next two fights, no disrespect to these two guys, but recognition-wise, the name's just not out there. So you've got Daniel Zelhuba versus Esteban Ribovic. Then you've got Ronaldo Rodriguez versus Ode Osborne. Brother, you're going up against Canelo. You've got to bring the big I want to ask you this. How petty do you think the UFC will be in this? Do you think they'll have one eye on when Canelo is going to make his ring walk versus trying to line it up as much as it can do with Sean O'Malley and get them both ready simultaneously? Because I don't think this time Canelo is waiting. He's not going to do that. But also, why does Dana hate boxing? I don't, not even hate. What is his issue with boxing? I think, I don't think there's an issue with boxing. I think this was going to, I thought, I think Dana and the UFC fought they were in a position because their thing has always been, we want to be the number one combat sports. And obviously with boxing in a downturn in that there's not as many superstar matches anymore, I think this might have been the UFC's opportunity to be like, bam, we're going to get you now. This is gonna be our, you know, our our got you moment of look. The UFC done better numbers than boxing's biggest superstar, and I feel like they just underestimated. Even though this ain't Canelo's biggest fight, I think they underestimated who Canelo it's, is. It's like Canelo if you watch the wire, Canelo's basically Marlo is saying, "Yo, my name is my name. Like I'm still the guy, regardless if you think because I'm going up against Belanga." And I feel like with the UFC, a lot of people have been saying this. The quality of their pay-per-view cards have been dire in general. And I feel like this is a culmination of different things. And I believe it's also a combination of like the UFC is like, no, you can't keep on giving people lackluster whole cards and then thinking and put it, selling it for pay-per-view. And then you want to put up against Canelo. And I, I there, there's lessons in it somewhere for the UFC. So... Quickly, before we wrap up, mm -hmm. who wins on that night? Does Canelo win or do the UFC win? Because the UFC apparently are at a loss. They slashed them ticket prices that were crazy high. The operating cost for this event is crazy high. That They're at a loss. Who wins on that night? And what is yeah. a win? Can I, you, That's the biggest thing. What is a win? Because Canelo, I can't imagine... The night that they're going to run, it's not going to be cheap. And I don't know if the pay-per-view will... I remember, I think he's got to do in Mexico that when he fights in Mexico, he's on free or subscription-based TV. It's not pay-per-view. So I don't know for Canelo and how much Canelo gets paid, whether that event even covers... Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what Canelo gets paid. 80% well, of everything. That was hilarious. Everything. <laughs> Hilarious man said, You go get popcorn, that's mine. That's for that, 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 that Roman. Remember that Roman Reigns promo where he's just like, All of this is mine, that cameraman, that's mine. Like, so obviously, I get, but then Canelo, I'm you know, what I'm interested in is Canelo fight is Canelo a weird position where he might start fighting at a loss where the amount of money you demand can't be covered by like your pay per view sales because the pay per view sales aren't going to be what they used to. But then on the UFC side of things as well, I think this was a this was a good thing for customers to start fighting back with their wallets saying, no, we're not paying extortionate prices no more. Like, it's getting ridiculous. You keep on charging extortionate prices. The whole world is going through a cost of living crisis at the moment. You keep on doing these stupid prices. Like, we can't... It's not sustainable. And then you want to do lackluster pay-per-views and expect people to they're paying what 80 dollars every month it can only go so far so i think both sides there's lesson to learn but ultimately canelo might win this round and nah, boxing as a result hey listen you know what i say if you go up against canelo and you lose expect to lose but guys we're going to wrap up today's episode as always like share subscribe until next time peace